Hello everyone and welcome. I am Robin Armbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and you are joining me for Paper Crafting Playdate. Today is February 18th, 2022. It is my good friend Bethany's birthday. Happy birthday. And it is also episode 49 of Paper Crafting Playdate. So welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to tackle a technique. I've had some requests to do some more techniques and I thought today would be perfect to work with watercolor pencils. So we're going to do some therapy coloring today. So let's get right to the stamping table so you can join me. Okay, hang on while I flip the camera. So happy Friday, everyone. I hope that you are doing super fabulously well. Springfield, Illinois just had a fun little snowstorm yesterday, so we have been dealing with more snow this year than normal. So that's kind of interesting. All right, I am going to make sure I can see your comments so you can say hello. I'm gonna zoom in. If I can, let's see how that's working. Kind of okay today, kind of interesting. All right, there we go. I have some fun mail to show you. So we're gonna take a look at that first. I have a couple of Valentines that came after last week's paper crafting play date. This is from my friend, Rebecca. I love the simplicity of the red and white. It's so classically Valentine's Day and these little embossed hearts are so very cute. Thank you very much, Rebecca. I love it. This is from Jerry. Very cute. Doilies. Do, doilies just scream Valentine's Day, don't they? They just make you so... Well, they make me very happy. And I love these little ribbons down here. These little um, flags coming off of the um, heart. So cute. And this is a thank you card I got from Becky. How pretty is that? I love this magenta color. Very cute. That's a fun little die. This is from Sue. She actually used last year's um, calendar that I created. She said she cuts those little messages off and she puts them onto cards. So that's pretty sweet. Thank you, Sue. This is from Diane. She took last week's project, the recessed panel cards, and she put together this fun little card. I love it. You see the embossing on there? So beautiful. And I have to just brag a little bit. This is my um, Valentine's Day card from my husband, Tim. And he doesn't stamp for fun. I, I've showed you some of his work before, but he, um, always makes me a card for my occasions. Now you can't really see this very well, but he went ahead and he stamped these little wine bottles and then he changed the little date to be our like birth, birth years on here and had us like pink and blue were always kind of our colors for like our wedding and stuff. So he has that coming together and then on the inside, <laughs> he's got the little pink and blue mixed together in the little martini glass. Isn't that cute? He did such a such a good job this year. So proud of him. Anyway, so sweet. So I'm going to brag on him a little bit. All right, we're going to do watercolor pencils today. And one of the reasons that I picked watercolor pencils was because it is one of the things that you can earn for free from me um, this month and it's a perfect time to showcase them plus as some of you have been asking me to do some techniques so I thought this would kind of come together in a really good way. Hi Judy, hi Margie, hi Cheryl, hi Susan, hi Lynn, 
thank you for joining me today. Susan, you're right. That card, every card he makes me is a treasure. Now, granted, he only has to make about, you know, like, like five a year birthday, Valentine's. I don't know. He put, he goes all in. He goes all in. He's so sweet. All right. So before I start, I'm going to announce this one more time. We have 10 days left of celebration. So end of February, this little sale brochure will no longer be live. So we have a few more days to take care of <laughs> earning some free stuff. And one of the reasons that I offered um, some really good freebies this month is because it is my anniversary month. So my stamp anniversary is in February. So I um, celebrated 22 years as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator this month. And I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and, and give back, you know, what I would make on an order in supplies because um, you guys are awesome. You guys who follow me and order, I just really appreciate. So this month, if you place a $50 order, you earn a celebration item, and then you also get a blending brush, and then you get a blender pen. And these are tools that usually come in packs of three. So you, you buy this for $12, you buy this for $12. Um, but I'm separating them and giving them away for free. So you would get one of each with a $50 order this month. And then, hello, Miss Lisa. If you wanted to bump up your order um, and spend $100 and get two celebration items, then I am going to add on either the watercolor pencils, assortment two, or this pack of water painters. Okay, so today we're going to focus on all of these little coloring things. And so if you've earned these, if you have um, earned some celebration sets, they're going to be perfect to do this coloring technique on. So we've never really talked about it before, but there's really two different kinds of images. There are line art images and there are solid images. And the difference is one, you, it just stamps an outline, that's the line art. And so you typically have to color it in with some method. The other way, which is generally how I like to stamp, this is my favorite go-to method, is to use a solid image in different colors of ink to create um, the, you know, to do the stamping on the card. So those are the two different methods. You don't need to color when you have solid images, just when you have line art images. And inside the celebration brochure this year, there are one, two, three, four stamp sets that are perfect for coloring. So they're all full of these beautiful line art images. So we're going to focus on that today. And we're going to start with this adorable little otter set. So when you are going to do watercoloring or you're going to use watercolor pencils, you have to have an ink that is waterproof. So usually I use the Memento ink for all my black basic, you know, black stamping. Um, but when you are going to use water or liquid of any kind, you need to have a permanent ink. So I'm going to stamp everything with stays on jet black. And then when you watercolor, you want to think about paper. And these are the kinds of papers that work best with watercolor pencils and um, adding water. So you've got your, your basic white and your very vanilla. These are our very smooth, thin cardstocks that are perfect for um, stamping those focal points. So those are good to use when you are going to do watercolor pencils. Um, another one that's really great is the shimmery white, and you won't be able to see um, its shimmer right now, but it has more of a um, coated surface, so it feels a little bit 
like um, almost like it has a little bit of a vellum feel to it. It, it feels a little plasticky, if that makes sense. It's very smooth, very good for watercoloring. Or you can use actual watercolor paper. And so um, that is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper that we sell. So um, the difference between those is really how much water you can add um, without the paper kind of getting disrupted. So you need a water um, waterproof ink, some watercolor uh, paper, you need some pencils, and then you either need a blender pen or these painters to move the water around, okay? This is the assortment here that you can earn for free, and these are the colors that I was showing you. So I'm going to use a lot of those, but there's a second assortment that you can um, purchase as well that has some of the basic colors. Um, that's assortment number one, so I've got those here as well, so I've got plenty of colors to choose from. This is page 126 in the catalog if you have that to reference. So if you flip back to 129, that's where the water painters are, the blending brush, the blending blender pen, the stays on ink pad, the memento ink pad, all of that stuff is right here. Um, and we're gonna be using a bunch of that today. All right, for our first card, we're gonna start with basic white paper. And my little swatch of paper is missing. <laughs> so let me cut one very quickly. Sorry about that. We're going to stamp these cute little otters on a little square. Of basic white. So I can show you the basic method. with the stays on. So let's take this little swimming guy in the water and we'll stamp him. Like that. And then we're gonna put our greeting on there as well in the corner. You are utter, utterly awesome. I cannot see your comments today, so I am sorry if I am not. There you are. Hi, Mary. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Faye. Awesome. All right, let's get going here, Robin. So I'm going to take my watercolor pencil. This is the basic technique. I like to just color really lightly, whatever the color is that I want the image to, to turn out to be. Just real lightly. So I'm going to just take, this is the early espresso color. And then I'm going to go back with the same color and I'm going to just press harder and kind of go around the outside edges. So that'll create a little bit of shadow and depth and highlight. I'm just going to highlight around where it would, where there would be some shadows, but basically you can just kind of re outline like that. And then I'm going to take the Cajun craze and I'm just going to do the underbelly there real lightly. Okay. 
And then we'll take the Coastal Cabana and we'll do the little fish. Now with the blender pen, so that you have two ends here and they're exactly the same, it just gives you, instead of having one end and you know having all that ink, it's not really ink, it's like clear. It's just, it's not really water either because it evaporates. So um, the two ends just give you the opportunity if you're coloring two things, you don't have to clean off the tip. Now you can see the tip is stained on mine, but that's okay. You'll see when I do that on the paper, nothing comes off, it's just from use. And so I'm gonna start with the um, little belly here, and I'm just going to use it like a marker and spread that color around like that. If you loved to do paint with water, when you were a kid, this is your jam here. So now I'm just going around and I'm just sliding that um, blender pen over where I made those marks and spreading it around. So it, it um, you know, turns the ink color, the pencil into paint basically. And then you just spread it around. So the, the places where I pressed harder are going to naturally be darker. Okay, I'm going to just clean off any brown and then I'm going to go back and do the fish. Like that. With the watercolor um, pencils and the blender pen, you have a lot of control. It's really easy to stay in the lines and um, and and have it look nice and, and soft. So now we're gonna just do the, see, I, this is why I don't watercolor on my paper crafting play dates because I have a hard time concentrating and talking at the same time. So you'll just have to, you'll just have to talk for me. So I'm gonna do really lightly around again, and then where these little marks for the water are, I'm just gonna make those a little bit darker, just like I did for the body. And then I'll take that. Sorry about that, that was my paper cutter. I'm just gonna rub right over the, where all that blue is, and just spread that around. Now on basic white cardstock, you can't go over and over and over a spot. You kind of have one pass over it with the blender pen or a paintbrush because the paper is so smooth it starts to, you know, pill up. We'll just give his nose a little. It starts to pull away and you get little pieces of cardstock coming up. So, um you want to kind of plan ahead with your coloring or wait and let it dry. Let's say you want it to, to be darker. Wait and let the colors dry and then you could go back over really gently. But it'll start to pull away. See how it's the paper is just pulling right there if it gets too wet. Okay, it's not it's not meant to be water watercolor paper like watercolor paper, so I'll show you the difference as we go along here. All right, so to put our card together, we're just going to take the colors that I used. So I used some balmy blue for the water and then I made that fish Bermuda Bay and we'll put this little card together. So this is the cool thing about Stampin' Up's um, pencils is that they, you know, match the Stampin' Up colors. So that makes it really easy to coordinate. So I'm gonna do a background. We are doing super, super simple cards today. There's no no dyes, no punches, we're just using ink and whatever is in the stamp set is what's gonna be the background. So I'm just gonna fill this up with these adorable little otters, kind of wonky like that, and make a little background. And then we'll add our pieces. So let's talk about watercolor pencils. If you have have them, 
um, leave me a comment and let me know what is your favorite way to use them. What, what are, do you usually use uh, a paintbrush? Do you use a blender pen? What do you use when you use watercolor pencils? And has it been a while since you've used them? Okay, we'll just pop him up right there. My blue here is just a little, well, no, that looks okay. I think it's because the little otters are going in different directions. And we'll put that up there. So just a very simple, basic card with our colors. Let's put a little, a couple little drops here. Right down there. All right, card number one. So blender pen with basic white cardstock. Here's our other little guy that comes in this fun little stamp set. I use the same colors to color him, but I just picked out different, different colors to accent um, the card. Sarah uses a blending brush and watercolor paper. Awesome. Lisa was a blender pen girl, but now that she's getting more into mixed media, like using a paintbrush. Yes. I think that's the thing. I think the more that you practice, it's such a good point, Lisa, because the more that you practice, um, the more control you have with the water, um, because I think it's the water that tends to get out of control. Okay, so now we're going to do... shimmery white cardstock. So I've already stamped with my stays on on the shimmery white cardstock and I already put some of the color on so I you know going to do it the same way. Um, just finish up here. So this is the Calypso Coral and do you see how the images um, naturally have these little detail lines? That's exactly where you need to put your color because that's kind of where you want those shadows to be. Um, so I'm trying to make this look like a little blue bird here. So I used the balmy blue pencil all over the bird first and then I went back with the Knight of Navy and I just kind of outlined the feathers and around the body of the bird. And so this time, instead of using the blender pen, I'm going to use one of the water painters. So there are, these come together in a set and you get the fine tip and the large brush tip and then you get this flat brush. And these have empty barrels that you fill with water and then you just squeeze out the water as you use it. So it's a little bit different than a paintbrush and water in that the water comes out evenly. So you can push it and send more water out if you want, um, or you can just kind of let the pen pull the water out. It works a lot like um, the Wink of Stella pen. So it allows you to have more water on your project, but yet it's still very controlled. So I'm gonna use the fine tip one be because this is a small um, image, and I'm gonna just start with the bird so you can already see how much more water is coming out but it's not pooling it's just spreading it more quickly so one of the best tips i ever learned is to just more dab when you're using a paintbrush because, and you want it to look like watercolor, um, because that kind of creates those little spaces. And the other great tip is you always want to just have a little towel or something nearby so you can just squeeze out more water, clean your brush. Okay, now I'm going to go back here where the yellow 
yellow. Orange is, and we'll just kind of pull that into the blue. And then we'll do the flowers. So I'm really just, the, the water activates that watercolor pencil and then you can pull it around the rest of your, um, to the rest of the, the image that you're trying to color. All right, so one of the things that you can do, now this gray comes in the other set of watercolor pencils, but I don't really love how this bird's just like hanging out in midair. Um, so I'm just gonna take the gray and just do a little bit of, light coloring around and it'll just kind of give a little bit of a background. And because that space is a little bit bigger, I'm going to go ahead and use this slightly bigger tipped brush and just kind of pick up that color and just blend it right in. So the um, shimmery white is nice because it holds more water than the basic white and so you you can play with it a little bit longer without it pilling up so it just kind of gives it a little little bit of a background there all right so i'm going to pick out the coral as my card background or my card base and then we'll put this on black. And before we pop this up, we're gonna make a background. And again, I'm keeping my cards very, very simple and just kind of using all the pieces that come in the stamp set. And so one of the things you can do is just take whatever greeting comes in the stamp set and just put that as your background. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm gonna bring in the memento for this because I don't need waterproof ink. So we'll just create a little bit of a background. You have to be careful with this one. I don't want there to be any mixed messages here. All right, let's see how this is gonna look up there. Good, I like that. So I'm gonna just finish off where there's little holes here. Just put a little friend over there. Perfect. go all right so that one is done and you know what it's just needs just a tiny little piece of gingham ribbon right down there very simple and then we'll put a little black little black dot up over there maybe two let's do two all right 
So that is watercoloring with the painters on shimmery white. So we're just kind of building up here just to show you different ways that you can use the watercolor pencils with whatever paper you have and what works best and all that good stuff. Okay. I like that one. I like the color combo on that one. All right, so next. Next, we're gonna do watercolor paper. And I thought it would be fun. Now, this isn't a celebration set, but it's a great set for watercoloring. This is in the January to June mini catalog on page 57. It's called In the Moment. Has great, great um, images and greetings that are perfect for, you know, friends, for friend cards. All right, so I used the watercolor paper and I I went ahead and stamped with the stays on ink on it. And I thought with the watercolor pencils this time that I would create a more of a sunset. So I'm gonna do the cherry cobbler and then I'll put some coral and just overlap those. And then we'll do yellow and overlap that. And then we'll put in some blue. Like that, so you can Take the different colors. See, I've done this one already. So I'll, I'm just gonna show you the background on this so that, cause you coloring in her is going to be very similar um, to what we just did with the bird and the otter. So I'm just gonna really show you the background and how you can use this flat brush. So I'm gonna start with um, the yellow it just applies more water so that you can really smooth it and work it into the paper. Now with watercolor paper, you can get crazy with the water. You can just, you can squeeze out all kinds of water into your brush and it'll take it. it you really can't put too much water on here. And then if you have too much ever, you can just dab it off and start again. So watercolor paper is really forgiving. It's a great way to play with a, with a paintbrush. So we're just gonna work our way up here and go through those colors. Like that. Now I'm gonna do the water next, but I wanna make sure all the red's out, so I'm just gonna dab that onto the little rag. Like that. Now you can use a blender, a blender pen on watercolor paper if you've got something that's very detailed like this and you don't want to try to use a lot of water with it. You can just bring in that blender pen too. All right, isn't that pretty on the background there? That is fun. So I, I finished this card so you could see it. I think I did a better job the second time here. Um, you can see her colored in and just mounted that very simply and did a three quarter front card. So that is watercolor paper, which is super fun. Now here's one where I just did the colors like I did for the um, sunset, but did a more of a rainbow. And then I stamped and embossed her in black and didn't color it in, but just 
So you can see the watercolor paper with a lot, a ton of color on there and how different that looks. Very fun technique. And then I did the same thing on basic white. So you could kind of see texturally how much smoother the color looks because the, the cardstock is smoother, right? When it's basic white, when it's watercolor paper, it's gonna have a lot more texture to it. Same color, same technique, same brush, but they just look different because of the, um, the cardstock. And you can see here, I took my dies. Um, amazing thanks. And I cut one out of the rainbow and then I cut the backing out of black and this turned out so pretty. I think it might be my favorite card of the day. Isn't that fun? That I love that. And then I thought, well, you know, let's just make some different backgrounds. And so this is shimmery white. This is watercolor paper. And I haven't turned them into cards yet, but I was just playing with the pencil marks and seeing how they would, um, seeing how they would dissolve and make different kind of like art mark backgrounds. Hi, Nydia. So it's fun. There's lots that you can do with, with that. So let me show you one more technique here. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other um, samples that I have. So let's do a little bit of embossing and we're going to bring back this Friendly Hello stamp set. And we're going to use the flowers and we're going to emboss them. So when you heat emboss, you have to use a sticky ink and powder. So I'm using Versamark. When you use Versamark on colored cardstock, it um, looks like a watermark. So you could just let this dry and you would just kind of see that image as a watermark. But this ink is also designed to be used for heat embossing. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna use white, so it's gonna stick where that Versamark ink is. Very nice. And then we heat it. All right, hold on. Heat this. My advice when heat embossing is to hold the heat tool about an inch away. Don't get too close, otherwise it warps your cardstock. And to hold it at a 45 degree angle so that the heat shoots across the cardstock, it actually goes faster. And as soon as you see the powder melt, it's, it's done and you can move on to the next spot.
All right, so we're actually gonna do a little bit of watercoloring on here, tone on tone. So I used Highland Heather for this cardstock, and then I'm gonna use the Gorgeous Grape, and I'm just going to give each petal a little bit of color. And this just creates a nice little effect um, that is just surprisingly very elegant looking. So you see what I'm doing? So let me pull out, we're gonna go back to the blender pen. And I'm just gonna pick up that purple and slide it down the, the rest of the petal. And so it'll be darker towards the center and lighter towards the edges of the petals like that. So let me show you one that's just about done here. And when it when it dries, look how pretty that is. So let's just finish that up. So you can see it gets a little bit lighter. And now we're going to put it on a card. So we're going to use that gorgeous grape. This is our purple card of the day. And we'll add a little bit of white to make that embossing pop. I had my little box of white embossing powder on the, on the floor next to me. Because <laughs> I figured I would spill it if it was on my desk. And earlier my cat came in and dunked his nose into the, oh, I was going to put ribbon on. I was going to wrap ribbon around here, but I'll just put it on top. <laughs> he stuck his little nose into the powder and he was walking around with white powder on his nose. So I had to catch him so I could wipe that off. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, when I dropped my paper cutter, it hit the bucket and now I have white embossing powder all over my floor. So that will be fun later in the crafter math. <laughs> All right, so we'll just trim those. I think that's really pretty, just all of that kind of monochromatic tone on tone, but yet you still, it still looks watercolored. There's just a lot of different ways that you can use those. I'm gonna use the classic matte dots and just add a couple, just add a couple little, little dots. <laughs> Cats are so cute, even when they're mischievous, yes. Thank you, Sarah. All right, so look at these. So I did um, Pale Papaya with Pumpkin Pie, and then I did Blushing Bride with Flirty Flamingo. Oh, that's a great idea, Lynn. This would be, make a very, very pretty Easter card. Spring birthday, all that good stuff. Yeah, great idea. Isn't that fun? So simple see that close up that little watercoloring so you can watercolor on colored cardstock too most of the time you end up doing it on something that's more of a neutral color um, you can also watercolor on a little bit darker color and there is a technique where you actually use the white um, watercolor pencil and you put white down first, and then you put your darker color on top. I'm not gonna show you that today because um, we've already done plenty, but this is an example of how you can get a vibrant color on top of darker cardstock. So this is crumb cake. Yeah, 
You could also do it on black cardstock. So this is one of those other images and I stamped it and embossed it in white, just like I showed you with the flowers. I went back and colored with the white watercolor pencil, and then on top of that, I put the color. So it's it's subtle, but you can see um, the color there. All right, so let's do a little comparison here. There's our basic white card. That's basic white. This one's basic white. And then we've got some shimmery whites. So these were other samples I made. They're all done with the watercolor pencils. That's a shimmery white along with our little bird that we did. And then with watercolor paper, We've got these two here. And then I, I did that little girl in watercolor paper. So you can see it just adds a nice little texture to it. This one also is watercolor paper. This one I did with my little cheater technique. But I've talked about this before, so you may remember. So my cheater watercolor technique <laughs> is where you stamp in a dark color and then you just use the ink from that image to watercolor with. Let me show you quickly what I mean, because this is something you can do when you're in a hurry. So you have to use a dark color ink. So I'm gonna use soft suede. And you have to do it kind of quickly while the ink is still wet. So I stamped him in soft suede and now I'm just gonna rub the blender pen over the ink, you know, the inked image and pick up that color and spread it around. You don't get you know super vibrant colors but it's a great way to very quickly color something you know just a little bit if you don't want to do full-on <laughs> water coloring I think I showed you these um, these cards a few weeks ago when we did the angled template but these were all stamped in navy blue and then I just colored bits of it using that little cheater watercolor technique and then here is that little buggy in red with cherry cobbler same thing nice dark ink color just spread that around so yeah you can do lots and lots and lots of things with these fun little watercolor pencils and blender pens very fun all right, pile of cards doesn't even fit in the frame, does it? That's okay. That's all right. Okay, you guys, if you have watercolor pencils at home, get them out, dust them off if you haven't used them, and give them, you know, give them another uh, try. If you are using them, I would love to see what you like to color with your watercolor pencils uh, so come on over to the um, Robin's Really Super Stampers Facebook group and I would love to see your samples that's where you guys get to show off all the things that you make thank you Faye Sue I forget about using them too I do I I really enjoy, I'm glad you guys have make requests because I enjoy um, pulling out the techniques. A lot of times, you know, I just focus on the designer series paper a lot because it is, it is a faster way to stamp. And I think a lot of people really enjoy using pattern paper. Um, so I focus on that a lot. And uh, I, I forget about doing things like this. So. Anyway, get out your celebration um, stamp sets and your line art images and do some 
watercoloring. Consider it therapy. Lock yourself away and um, spend some time coloring, and I bet you'll feel better. Thank you so much for watching today. Take care, everybody. Bye.